Good afternoon. A bit of an agenda um, to quickly run through. I'm going to run through the, the sort of challenges faced um, by the house building industry from our 2015 change of regulations, which is where we noticed the the sort of the the, the change um, down the more electrification route of uh, renewable technologies from PVs to hybrid heat pumps and such like. Um, a little bit about the technologies um, and um, probably more so about the understanding of the electrical loadings where we started to, to kind of where we are now um, and that, that kind of brings us on to the sort of connections journey with uh, uh, Scottish and Southern Energy and uh, Scottish Power Energy Networks um, and a, a, a quick kind of overview from the, the connection side from our regional perspective um, albeit we, we do rely fairly heavily on idea knows and such like and really just what does the future hold so I've got a, a few queries and questions that have come in from our regional team on this so um, really the the energy transition itself um, started for us back in 2015 this gave us kind of two cost-based solutions um, to achieve the regulations one of which was a, a PV and the other one was a hybrid solution as I've kind of mentioned earlier both meant differing things to utility providers. One's a generator and one was um, the loading. So um, this was, from our perspective, mainly dependent on the house type size, available roof space, and uh, any kind of network restrictions in the areas and what that meant to uh, um, infrastructure upgrades and such like. So um, we, we realized early on that this was the, the dawn of a new era, um, so to speak. So it was at that point we, we really wanted to get heavily involved with the, the IDNOs and the DMOs um, and likewise uh, Scottish and Southern Energy and Scottish Power Energy Network kind of came to the table um, in sort of 2016-2017 when we, we started getting in our perspective. Um, key drivers uh, was um, the, the regulatory change um, which was the kind of the forced change upon us which we've, we've, we've now kind of embraced and and we were looking forward to the, the challenges ahead. Um, but uh, the, the change to heating networks um, and the, the sort of pending net zero target set by government was probably the, the, the sort of the main drivers um, behind the, the, the change for us. So um, the infancy of the technologies um, from a mainstream developer's perspective were unknown entities um, in terms of electrical demand. Um, it's not something that we'd looked at before. I don't think it was anything that the DNOs had really envisaged. Um, so I think collaboratively working together with uh, all the DNOs um, has really got a, a, got us to a position that we're in a, a good understanding um, of, of where we are. So um, I think initially it was looking at uh, the electrical loads um, we spoke to Scottish Power Engine Networks and we got some monitoring stations put onto our developments to understand what it meant when we had a hybrid heat pump solution, for example, along with a, a PV solution. And that's been on the go now for um, well over kind of two years. So the, the information and understanding that's coming from those figures is really helping drive down the, the sort of the ADMD. So the, the, this all comes back to, you know, so we've got our own corporate social responsibility um, and, and what we want to do as a business and in, in, in the light of this as well. So um, th those were our kind of main drivers. So going back to kind of 2015, the, the what does a compliant house type look for us? So we had to look at that and come up with different solutions. Uh, we came up with a hybrid heat pump solution, which um, came with its, 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 its issues in terms of uh, installation, um, customer perception, what that meant to the, the network, etc. Um, PV and EV charging is there regardless of the PV or, or, or hybrid. Um, battery storage is one that we've started to look a bit more into um, more recently because of the reduction of the impact to the infrastructure um, moving forward. So this is a, a, an early slide here of um, where we started off looking at a 2014 and a 2018 dwelling to understand what the loads meant so you'll see straight away you know a gas boiler for a five bed house used to be two kilowatts um, of a load for that house initially we'd looked at the hybrid heat pump and the figures were anywhere between 8.6 and 12.2 for that same five bed house with an ev charging point now this has come 
through to fruition with the monitoring that we've had on the sites that these figures have been reduced quite dramatically. So even over the past sort of two to three years, the understanding of the technologies has got much, much better as we go forward. So we've obviously looked at the diversity factors and demand management systems, the, the balancing of the, the grid and such like, which obviously helps. So these are the, the, the main areas that, that, that we've kind of looked at um, on these ones. We know EV charging, a 7.2 kilowatt charger is the mainstay for new build developers and the diversity factor of that is somewhere in the region of 2.5 with the view that that could come down further the more the volume um, generates on that one as well. So um, these were some of the questions that, that we asked early in the, in the process to, to really understand um, what these meant if we put them onto our house types and such like. So um, that, that was a wee bit of history of, of where we'd come from as a developer and where we're kind of getting to. But uh, this this was a, a kind of a wee excerpt from uh, our Cala North team. Um, as I said before, we generally deal through an IDNO. Um, so what we would provide the IDNO is load calculation, site plan, estimated house numbers, delivery time scales. This process is hopefully going to be made easier in the future with our own internal loading calculators to give more precise loads, which has been done in conjunction with the manufacturer's information, the DNOs and the IDNOs. And I know the DNOs are we're looking to standardise uh, an ADMD calculator across the board um, so there's a wee bit of consistency there and I think that's the, the main driving force that, that we would like to see across the UK as well and um, certainly Scottish Southern Energy have really embraced that and, and, and engaged in the sort of collaborative working in some of the workshops that we've held um, across the board to, to, to get to that understanding so at least in Scotland from our perspective when we're looking at a site it's the same loads regardless of the DNO area is, is ultimately where we would like to be, which gives us a wee bit more cost certainty and understanding of, of what these are going to be. But uh, just a, a very quick one, um, a quote from our team. Um, the, the staff at SSEN are, are helpful during the connection process. Um, a bit short and sweet, but it, it gives a bit of a flavour of um, we're now starting to engage at DNO level um, as well as through the IDNO, and I think we all need that understanding of of how we do this and how we move forward. So um, what does the future hold? These are some points that uh, we've, we've kind of queried and, and would like to raise from the regional team. Um, SSE requirements are different to Scottish power requirements. Standardization, standardization would help everyone. Yes, absolutely. I think we're now moving into that, that realm where we are now speaking directly with different DNOs and the information uh, and understanding of what these loads mean is becoming a bit more standardised. Hopefully that will then go back via the ENA um, and, and look to become a bit more standard across the UK. So these are some of the things that I am feeding back to our regional teams um, for a bit of understanding of what the stakeholder meetings and such like. Um, uh, the next question here is SSE point of connection application charges are introduced to discourage multiple applications for the same site but makes tendering competitively costly. Um, that's one that maybe uh, Scottish and Southern Energy can, can kind of take back and, and have a look at and see if there's something that they can do on that one. I would welcome any kind of feedback on that as well. But um, if standardisation is driven by the DNO, then there must be training provided to developers and IDNOs to, to understand why loadings are being calculated in such a way. That has been addressed through the ADMD calculator and such like. So I think just that collaborative workshop understanding of you know what the new technologies mean, what, what the, the, the infrastructure constraints are, a bit more of a, a holistic approach um, and, and a bit more of an, an open book approach, I think, is, is, is welcomed. But I think we're, we're on that road now and I, th I think we'll, we'll, we'll understand it better as, as we move forward. Um, and again, the, the, the last kind of question there. So these are the kind of questions that are getting raised from our regional teams um, and we now have answers to them, which will hopefully make it, make it a bit easier. So. Like, like the statement at the bottom there, a combination of technologies will assist the decarbonisation of the grid. Um, and I don't think there's going to be one technology that is going to answer all our prayers. I do think that there's going to be a mixture of technologies out there that we need to understand to, in order to 
balance the grid properly, understand what the infrastructure constraints are, um, with a view to, to bringing these technologies forward, certainly in the short term for 2030 for the, the net zero and the longer term um, for the, the wider sort of 2045 and respectively in England the 2050 um, net zero targets um, that have been set from the local government. So hopefully this just gives you a quick and brief understanding of some of the journey that we've been on. Um, obviously I'm, I'm a bit limited time scaled but uh, there's a lot of work going on in the background by everybody on this topic but uh, I'm happy to kind of field, field questions offline if, if, if that helps but uh, um, mean, meantime thanks thanks for listening um, hopefully that's given you a wee bit of insight from, from a, a developer's perspective of uh, where we are um, and uh, hopefully we can move forward with the, the, the right foot and uh, and create a sustainable lifestyle for everybody in the future. Thank you.